Hello there and uh, welcome to my new course. In this course I am going to teach you how to build uh, an Android application by implementing the multi-modular architecture. You will learn uh, everything about uh, properly configuring the project uh, in order to make uh, a maintainable structure that uh, can grow easily. Now a modularization is an unavoidable architecture when uh, working on a big uh, industry level uh, code bases that uh, pretend to expand furthermore. Almost uh, every employer out there will appreciate your experience uh, with uh, working on a multi-modular projects. So this course uh, is actually a beginner friendly, which means that uh, you don't need to have any experience with this kind of uh, an architecture uh, to be able to follow along. And the proof of that is the actual uh, structure of this uh, same course. So first, uh, we're going to build uh, an Android application without the multi-modular architecture so that uh, you can get introduced with that uh, same project as well. And only after we fully complete that application, then we are going to refactor that project and uh, split it up uh, into uh, multiple different modules. Uh, that way, you will learn not just uh, how to create uh, and maintain a multi-modular project, but also how to refactor an existing project to follow the same architecture and structure. In this uh, course specifically, uh, we're going to create and build uh, one uh, beautiful diary application by using the newest uh, APIs and technologies for Android development, like the room library for a local database, uh, Jetpack Compose for uh, building the UI of our application, a new Splash API, AI, a material tree, Kotlin coroutines, Dagger Hilt uh, dependency injection library, one tap uh, sign in with Google, uh, Firebase authentication, Firebase uh, storage, MongoDB authentication, uh, Mongo Realm database, but also a Mongo Realm or a Mongo device sync service as well. So most of you have already heard about uh, Mongo Realm uh, or Mongo Device Sync. So it's um, one very useful uh, feature of a uh, MongoDB, which we can use to synchronize the data between a client-side database or Android in this case, and a powerful, uh, fully managed uh, backend uh, called uh, Atlas. So without further ado, I'm going to now actually launch uh, that application, and I'm going to show you around so you can see um, how this application uh, will look like. And uh, I'm going to now uh, launch this application to show you uh, how that application will actually look like. Okay, so this is uh, our actual uh, splash screen. At the moment uh, I'm using uh, a dark theme uh, in my uh, smartphone device, but later I'm going to switch to a light theme and show you how will that actually look like. So at first, uh, when we launch our application for the first time, uh, we're going to see here this uh, authentication screen which will allow us to authenticate uh, by using our Google account. And uh, when I press sign in with the Google button, then we are going to authenticate uh, with a MongoDB, but also with a Firebase as well, because we are going to need a Firebase um, in our application to actually upload some of those uh, images that uh, I already have here. So I'm going to show you that a little bit later. So let's just uh, click uh, sign in uh, with Google. So we can actually um, sign into this application. And I have already uh, imported here uh, or I created uh, some of those uh, diaries in our application. And from there, uh, you can see that, uh, as you can see, when I scroll down below, our header or this uh, top bar will slowly disappear on the top. And uh, this uh, actual uh, data uh, header will be uh, sticked or fixed uh, here on top of our screen. So now I can just scroll down below and you will see that uh, here we have uh, multiple different diaries uh, in that uh, same date. So 28th of January, we have a couple of different diaries here. When I scroll down below, then this uh, actual uh, header will be uh, replaced with another one. There you go. So as you can see, we have different dates here and uh, each diary contains some uh, information like uh, the actual um, uh, mood, uh, the actual uh, timestamp and of course uh, the text uh, or a description that we have written with that uh, same diary. Each diary here can have uh, many different moods to choose from. So each mood actually contains uh, a unique color as well. One of those diaries actually uh, or actually two diaries contain uh, this uh, show gallery button. So if I now press this uh, show gallery uh, then we are going to see uh, all different uh, gallery images that we have uploaded on that specific uh, diary, right? And those images uh, are actually stored within our Firebase storage. So in our Firebase storage, uh, we have one uh, directory called the images, and this directory will contain uh, uh, multiple different directories where uh, each directory will represent a unique user in our application. So this is a unique uh, ID of uh, my current user. And if I open up that directory, then we are going to see all different uh, galleries or uh, images that we have uploaded by that specific user. 
so we can also check out those uh, images here as well and uh, now of course uh, i'm going to um, show you that we have also uh, one option here in our um, uh, home screen so we have an option here to choose a date to which we want to filter those diaries so we can select here a specific date for example 27 january and then we will be able to filter our diaries to see only that specific um, uh, date and the diaries that were created on that same date uh, here we also have a uh, navigation drawer which will allow us to uh, access uh, two different options to sign out and to delete uh, all diaries uh, from our uh, account as well here we also have a floating action button so we can click that floating action button and that will open up a uh, right screen where we can uh, create a new diary so here we have of course um, our top bar which displays the current uh, date and current time and this uh, top bar also displays um, selected uh, mood uh, from our right screen as you can see here we can just scroll on the left and right to select different kind of a uh, mood which we want to choose for our uh, current diary and each mood will have of course the unique color so you will see about that and of course here we have a specific um, option on the top to select a specific date and a time uh, for which we want to create this diary so so if we have forgot to specify or create a new diary for a couple of days before then you can choose this um, calendar option and from there you can select uh, the specific date to which you want to create uh, your diary for example maybe 25 so January 25 and then we can choose the exact uh, time uh, for which we want to create this diary we can leave that as it is and then that time will change so if i now press this uh, close uh, icon then that uh, date will be a uh, reset but of course you don't have to do that uh, anyhow here we can also type the title of this actual um, uh, diary for example a uh, new uh, diary so that's just an example we can write here some uh, random text there you go here we also have an option to actually select um, uh, different uh, images uh, from our uh, uh, own device I'm going to just scroll down below until I find some uh, some uh, interesting images from my own device. Okay, so I can choose maybe, for example, uh, two different uh, images. I can add them to this uh, same gallery component. From there, of course, uh, I can select one of those uh, images. And we will have an option to, of course, uh, zoom in to see uh, how those uh, images actually uh, look like. We also have an option to... Uh, to close this uh, image or to delete this uh, image from this uh, gallery component as well so there you go we can now delete that one and uh, of course we can now press save and uh, that um, diary will be saved uh, for that specific date that we have specified in our uh, calendar right so now let's press save and now we can check the january uh, 25 so there it is we have a new uh, diary that says uh, some random text and here of course we can now press show gallery to see that actual image that we have um, uploaded to our firebase uh, storage there it is so now we can see a new image and if i refresh this uh, page uh, you will see that uh, a new image here will also appear in that same storage as well now um, the next thing what i want to show you here is that uh, our application can actually function uh, without an internet connection so for example let's just uh, open up this uh, mongodb uh, uh, atlas and here i'm going to refresh uh, this data from our uh, diary collection so now uh, let's say that uh, we actually disable an internet connection in our application so now i'm going to disable an internet connection right here okay and then uh, i'm going to try to delete uh, one of those uh, uh, diaries from this application let's uh, choose maybe this uh, surprised um, uh, diary so if I now select that diary, then you will see that uh, a new option here will appear that will allow us to delete that uh, selected diary. So let me just here um, find that surprise, uh, surprise diary. Okay, so here it is. So the surprise diary is a third from the bottom in this case. And uh, now that we are actually offline, I'm going to press uh, delete here to delete that uh, actual diary. And you will see that that diary has been successfully removed, right? So... Um, now if I refresh this uh, uh, backend database, you will see that that diary will actually uh, not be removed, right? So let's just scroll all the way down. You will see that here we already have that surprised, um, surprised uh, diary. So that diary has not been removed actually, because in our device when we have removed that uh, uh, diary, we didn't have an internet connection to push that change. That diary was only removed from our local database and not from our um, uh, database from our MongoDB Atlas. However, if I now enable back the internet connection, 
There you go. So now when I uh, enable back the internet connection, then uh, MongoDB uh, SDK will automatically push that change and it will remove that uh, same uh, diary that we have already removed from our local database. So now let's refresh this um, uh, collection from our MongoDB Atlas. Let's uh, scroll all the way down and you will see that now uh, there is no any diary with that uh, uh, surprise mode. And also, of course, we can, uh, for example, select one of those diaries that actually contain uh, some gallery images, for example, this one. And I can now select this uh, actual image and I can press delete button. So now if I press delete, that actual um, image will be removed from this um, a gallery uploader. But if we don't press save button and we go back, then that image will not be removed. Okay. And if I go back now again, you will see that that image was not removed. So only if we remove that image from this uh, gallery uploader component and we click save after that, only then this image will actually be removed from our Firebase. So now, as you can see, we no longer have that uh, actual uh, gallery image from our uh, uh, happy diary here. And I can now refresh also this uh, Firebase um, storage to see that uh, one image uh, will actually be deleted. So we have for now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now if I refresh this page, you will see that now we will have uh, seven different uh, images. Okay. Okay. So here I have uh, showcased uh, how uh, our application can uh, interact with the backend database uh, of our MongoDB Atlas. So you have seen that we are able to interact with our database uh, uh, both in the cloud and the locally uh, with or without the internet connection. So everything uh, will work uh, perfectly fine. And of course, there are many more different things that we're going to implement in this application. But if you want to see how we are implementing all those uh, uh, amazing features uh, in this application, then I highly suggest you to watch this uh, whole course. And let me just here um, change the theme of our application so you can see how that application will look like in a live theme as well. There you go. So that's our application in a live theme. So it looks uh, very nice. As you can see, a live theme uh, has also some beautiful colors in our application. There you go. So that's how it will look like. Very nice. And uh, that's everything I wanted to showcase here in this introduction video. So what are you waiting for? Enroll in this course now and uh, learn how to build uh, industry-level multimodular applications.